I've had a cool opportunity these past couple of months to try out and test a number of different firing systems for pyrotechnics. Some of these systems are mine, some of these I borrowed from others, and I thought I'd put together a video kind of showing the basic operations of each one, uh, listing some of the features that they each provide. And although I have my favorite, uh, I'm not gonna tell you which one's the best, I'll let you decide. There are a number of firing systems that I'm not going to include. There's a lot out there. Here's a list of some that won't be included in this video. They're either not as popular with the hobbyists or club members, um, or they're super expensive or a bit older, but still capable and get the job done. All right, but we will cover fire links, and we will cover the ignite system, and we'll go through mongoose from Simply Fire, We'll fire up some Cobra devices, and then we'll also cover FireTech. I did have the Firefly system here and tried it out briefly. However, it was returned before taking any videos. The initial design approach was a low voltage coil for igniting Visco. I've seen many modifications people have done for firing igniters and matches, typically removing the original coil in one way or another. Firefly competes with Ignite, but I don't think it really compares to the other systems we'll walk through. And here's another system out there I have not used, but I thought I would mention, the Crackle Cube. I have played around with their software for scripting and found it fairly intuitive, but I don't have any compatible devices for the Crackle Cube. I find it very clever that they decoded the signals for these Chinese eBay Billisong devices, or however you want to pronounce that name, so that you can run a script through the Crackle Cube to all those AA battery-powered field modules. Okay, we'll do some of the comparisons up front and then the videos of each system. So first we'll go through the different functions of the controllers. All systems will allow you to manually fire and all of these systems will allow you to run a script. In terms of audio playback, Firelinks right now doesn't have any audio playback features. On the Ignite system, you're gonna use your tablet or phone as the controller, um, which will have audio playback. Mongoose uses a computer as the controller, uh, and so the computer will have audio playback. Uh, for Cobra, the controller itself doesn't have any audio playback. You can get an audio box, which is a separate device. Uh, the FireTech controllers do have audio playback. Um, there's also a FireTech audio device that you can purchase separately similar to Cobra. In terms of time code, most of these don't generate time code, but they some of them will receive. Firelinks will receive time code, Mongoose will receive time code, Cobra can receive time code, FireTech can receive and send time code. For sequences or alternate scripts, Mongoose, Cobra, and FireTech all have alternate scripts where you can have uh, separate scripts and fire those off by the push of a button in parallel with or before or after your main script. Lockout, where say you want to lock out a certain product or a certain module from firing because of some issue, probably safety related. Uh, Firelinks, Mongoose, Cobra, and FireTech all have those features. And then the other thing is the max number of modules, mods, or field modules that you can connect to a controller. Firelink claims uh, 999. The Ignite is limited to six modules. Mongoose, I deducted it's 255 modules based on their claim of maximum uh, queues. Cobra is 100 modules. Uh, you can bump that up to 200 modules with some of their beta firmware. And FireTech is 99 modules. And I should point out that those systems that can receive timecode allow you to set up multiple controllers, each with their own network of field modules, and you can synchronize and control every controller through the same timecode signal. Okay, now let's go through the field modules. And first, we'll talk about the number of queues per module. Firelink is set up with 24 onboard queues. Ignite comes in an 18 queue module and now also a 36 queue module. Those are onboard quick plug terminals only. Mongoose is set up for 48 queues per module, separated on two 24 queue slats or rails. 
Cobra comes in configurations of 18 cues per module, and you can get an 18 q module, a 36 q module, or a 72 q module. One thing to keep in mind is that a 36 q module is essentially considered two 18 q modules. So that's two channels on your controller. Uh, the 72 q module is four channels on your controller. Cobra has options for quick plug and standard speaker terminals, both onboard and on various slat options. FireTech's base module is set now for 64 cues per module, and it relies on four slats. Those modules can be purchased in a 32 or 16 configuration, but the baseline is a 64 Q module. Slats can be purchased for either the standard E-matches or quick plugs. Regarding DMX, there is no DMX uh, function with Firelinks or Ignite. Mongoose has a separate DMX module that you can purchase. With Cobra, you can get a DMX option on your 36Q or 72Q module. And for FireTech, any of their modules can be set up for DMX. FireTech has a unique function as a standalone mode for their field modules, which actually allows you to run a small show with just a field module without a controller. This also allows those field modules to be set up as a sequencer that can be triggered by any other system. For example, Firelinks could trigger a FireTech standalone module as a sequencer for 64 additional pyro cues to step through as a script or even DMX. The frequency for Firelinks, Cobra, and FireTech is 2.4 gigahertz. Mongoose uses 900 megahertz. FireTech now also has a dual band configuration with a 900 megahertz uh, signal and Ignite uses a low energy Bluetooth. For GPS, Mongoose and FireTech both have GPS options such that the uh, show can be set to start at a specific time via GPS signal. In terms of total cues per system with one controller, Firelink claims 23, nearly 24,000 cues. Ignite, again, is limited to six modules, so with the 36 Q module, 216 cues. Mongoose is 6,120. Cobra at the current stable firmware of 100 modules per controller is 1,800 cues. Again, keep in mind like a 36 Q module is actually two channels. Cobra does allow you to set multiple modules on the same channel. So say you have identical left and right stations, you can set them on the same channel. That doesn't eat up your channels on your controller. And then FireTech with the 64 Q module is 6,336 cues per controller. Okay, first we have the Firelink system. And uh, here we've got their CM64 command module. It has 32 buttons for up to 32 individual cues, and then you can shift and go up to 64, hence the CM64. Oddly, and I'm not sure why, the firing modules or field modules only have 24 cues, so there's a disconnect there. You can see it does have a two wire option, and there's interfaces for time code and for charging on the sides. To power it up, we'll push these uh, large yellow push buttons. We'll fire up the field module two. This is the FM24 firing module. You see it is a little larger in size, and uh, right now I have these LED test cards plugged into all the terminals so we can test the script. You can see now that both of them have a green light on the inside. Uh, they both come with a similar large screen with a lot of information on it. Right now we see that one of three modules is connected. I'm not turning on the other two modules. I'm going to go to the menu and I've got options here on the screen and so I can pick which option it is to load the files. And it'll load from the USB card. And then I can pick which file I want to load. I'll pick file one here. And it'll start loading that script into the command module. Once it's in the command module, it'll load to the modules. This take a little bit of time. So I'll go ahead and skip the video forward a bit. But it took maybe 30 seconds to load. Now once it's loaded, I'm going to go into the 
menu and I need to tell it what command it's going to use for running the script. And this time we're going to use the internal clock rather than uh, SIMT. We can turn the key to put it into ARM. And then there's also a separate ARM button. And you can see that both the command module and the field module start flashing red. All right, with a press of the red fire button, we'll start the script. We can see on the screen the countdown. And if we watch on the field module, we'll start seeing the LEDs fire in sequence as part of the script. On the screen, we see the position we are in the script and also the time to the next event. All right, as we're kind of finished with the 24 cues, I'll go ahead and stop the script. The module goes back to a green illumination. I can tell it that we want to now manually fire by pushing buttons on the command module. I can put it into arm again and we can just manually fire by pressing the red fire button or or I can select individual cues and fire them by pressing the cue on the panel and then the fire button oops that one didn't uh, recognize my button push but the operation is to first select the cue on the command module and then hit the fire button. All right, we'll go ahead and take it back out of arm and turn the key off. All right, that was a real quick and simple demo of the Firelinks system. Let's see what we got next. Up next is Ignite, and what I have is an I-18 module. The Ignite system pairs up with an app on your phone. The module is a fairly simple plastic case. There's a single button to power it on. And on the bottom, there is a compartment for a rechargeable battery. It is nice that it is rechargeable. However, to recharge it, you have to remove the battery and plug it into a special USB dongle. There's also an option for a 9 volt battery, which is nice. The onboard terminals are set up for quick plugs only, and right now I have these LED test strips plugged in so we can test fire from the app and see our script running. Module's connected, and I'm going to hit free shoot, and it's going to bring up this screen where I can fire individual cues. And I can simply select the cue and then hit the fire button. There's a little bit of a delay, but it works pretty good. Now I go back to the menu and I'll go to shows and I have a show already set up in this. Just real simple, just a couple of events. So we'll go ahead and run this show. And I've got Bluetooth attached to the shop speaker here. So we'll hear the music. There's a number of warnings that come up reminding you to silence your phone and make sure you're ready I find these a little bit annoying, but I understand you can disable a lot of this. But here we go, we'll run the show. We stopped the show and uh, you know there you go that's uh, kind of the ignite system fairly simple I did notice it like doesn't really have a separate arm function which kind of caught me off guard but uh, other than that it worked all right all right next up we've got the mongoose system by simply fire which is something I've enjoyed trying out here we've got the mongoose field unit it comes in a nice case. It has a rechargeable battery um, on the uh, back. There's two DB25 connectors that uh, they go to two 24Q slats. 
Um, you can see this slat here is fairly large and heavy, sits nice and flat. Um, on one of these, I've got one of the DB25 cables connected up to a custom splitter that split down to these two 12Q LED test boards. Uh, this is something that the owner custom made. Now one of the uniquenesses with the Mongoose system is that you run it off of a laptop or a computer. You run the Mongoose software. It gives me a warning out of the gate that I didn't shut things down properly the last time. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it load up the previous script that I had created. And when it starts up, the first thing it's gonna start doing is looking for the field units. And we'll turn on this one field unit here, and it's pretty straightforward. There's a nice little LED screen there, you know, very simple buttons, fairly intuitive interface I found. And I should point out that uh, connected to your laptop through your USB is going to be the Mongoose base radio. And that's how it's communicating to the field units. In this demo here, I have this turned down to low power with everything sitting next to each other on the workbench. I apologize if the resolution doesn't come across great here, but I did find the software fairly intuitive. Um, I didn't have a manual or anything, but once I loaded the script in the audio, it was clear I could test run the audio through the software. So if you wanted to do a sound check and adjust your volumes, that was pretty straightforward. There's a menu button up top here for arming the system, so we'll arm it. And we'll notice that we'll get a green bar around our module indicator there on the screen. The other thing I noticed is that you can turn on and off uh, LED lights on the field modules, which I thought was kind of nice if you wanted to be able to see the arm status of the modules out in the field. We'll go ahead and take it out of arm to kind of show you what those status lights look like and we'll put it back into arm. And then uh, we'll go ahead and run the script and you should see on those LED test boards there uh, the cues firing as we run the script. So we'll go ahead and hit run. You see there on the screen on the indicator there for the module what cues are being fired. You can also see the LEDs on those test boards. Also below the audio file is a list of all the events in the script. All right, we'll go ahead and stop this. All right, one other thing I wanted to show with the Mongoose system is how to manually fire. And you can pull up this pin board on the screen and essentially you just click on the cues on that pin board and they fire. Uh, pretty straightforward. It'd be a little easier with a mouse. Um, or you can just hit the fire button and it'll go through them in sequence. A fairly simple way to manually fire a bunch of product. Well, that's a very simple and brief overview of the Mongoose system. I'll admit, personally, I've got some mixed feelings about use of the computer for firing rather than a dedicated controller. However, I found it very intuitive very simple to use and very feature rich. All right, next we have some devices from Cobra Firing Systems. And what I have here is two 18Ms optioned out in seahorse cases with internal rechargeable batteries and external power and an 18R2 that is optioned out with time code. All right, unlike other systems, the 18M and the 18R2 doesn't have a screen per se. They have these segmented LEDs. So as we go through and start these up, there's a lot of information that's coming up on the segmented LEDs. 
You have to understand what the various partial texts and codes are to understand your battery strength, your connection, your signal, your channels. All right, we have the module on the left set to channel one and the module on the right set to channel two. And the 18R2 is gonna tell us that we've got uh, two devices set up. We can check out the different channels or modules connected by pressing the channel plus or channel minus buttons. We also see that we've got the script loaded in the 18R2. It's reflected with the LEDs lighting up for the channel one and a couple for channel two. I have to put the system in ARM. There's an ARM button on the 18R2. However, we've got to turn the key on the modules to ARM the modules individually. And once everything is armed, we'll see the arming status on the modules. There's a red LED there. And we'll see that the red LED on the 18R2 has gone from flashing to solid when the system is armed. All right, to start the script, Cobra lets you set some trigger keys as kind of a code to start the script. I've realized when I was doing this, I forgot what the trigger was for this script. I was thinking it was channel zero and auto fire, but that didn't work. So let me try a couple other things here. I realized, oh, it was channel zero and Q1. So once I hit channel zero and Q1, that starts the script that's loaded. And you can see this is just going through the cues on the left channel one module. You see that reflected on the 18R2, and also you can see the LEDs uh, flashing on the 18M. All right, I stopped it. I'm gonna just put the system back in test with the green button down here. And to manually fire, it's similar. We'll turn the modules to arm, and we'll arm the system by pressing the arm button on the 18R2. We'll wait for that red LED to go solid. Now here, all we need to do is select our channel. I'll select channel one first, and then press the corresponding cues to fire with that channel. We go to the next chat. Oh, I accidentally went to channel zero and hit one rather than channel two, and that started the script that I had loaded. Anyways, we'll let this finish, and then um, we'll go ahead and fire from the other channel. Okay, we've stopped the script, and I'll go ahead and select channel two rather than channel zero, and then selecting the corresponding cues that we want to fire. And when we're all done, we can put the system back into test. And you can see when in test, you can't fire anything. All right, that was a real simple review of the Cobra firing system with some of their basic 18M modules. All right, next and last, we've got the FireTech system. Here we have the FTQ99SX controller, and the controller has a input and output for timecode. Um, it also has a audio output for its internal audio player and a USB port for loading audio scripts and charging. We're gonna go turn it on with this push button. The FTQ16 times 64 field module also starts up with this push button. Module's a bit dirty here as it was left out in the elements in its last use. It powers up and there's no script loaded, so it's gonna ask me what ID to set it to, and I'm gonna set it to ID one. And on the controller, we can see that it's connected in that first box there under the green bar represents ID one, and it tells me it's a 64Q module. Now I can go to the module screen on the controller and here it shows me all the information relative to module, signal power, battery, continuity, which there isn't any right now. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and plug in one of these rails to the FTQ module. We'll plug that into R1 and we can see on the screen here that it says there's no igniters connected, although it's detected a rail. And we'll go ahead and plug in one jumper here, just a piece of wire. So I really like the indications on the screen. And so now it shows me I've got a rail with continuity 
at Q4. And that shows up on the controller screen as well. All right, we'll go ahead and put the system into ARM with the turn of the key. So now it's armed. You can see in the background that the module screen is flashing as well. As I mentioned, this does have an internal audio player, which I don't have any audio files loaded. And we can load a script, but I don't have a script right now. We're just gonna manually fire. So in order to manually fire, now that we're in ARM, we're going to first hit the manual fire button. And then manually firing is a sequence of first selecting your module, selecting your rail, and then selecting which cue that you want to fire. Another option is to just push the step button, which will step through the cues in sequence. So that's manual firing with FireTech. I'll briefly show you the steps for loading a script and running a script, but I'll provide a link to a video I did for FireTech a couple years ago that goes through it in detail. But if we wanted to play a script, or let's say a script to music, we could load the script and the audio file through the USB drive. We could go to the script menu here, and not only will it tell us the name of the script, the on-screen instructions will guide us through loading it into the modules. But once it's armed, all we need to do is press the auto play pause button here, and we can control not only the script, but the synchronized audio. Well, that brings us to the end of this brief FireTech demo and wraps up the video for today. I had mentioned on a number of pyrotechnic forums that I had had the opportunity to try out all these systems for a number of months and started fielding a number of questions. I thought it would be best to put out a video showing all of these systems side by side that might answer a number of questions and hopefully you found it educational and informative. I think we all tend to have our favorite system. I know I do. Hopefully our favorite system is the one that we have invested our money into. But I think we're quite lucky not only as professionals but as hobbyists, club members and backyarders to have so many options out there right now for firing systems. And I look forward to the continued competition amongst them to drive further innovation that we'll all get to benefit from.